The goal is interdependent. This comes from Covey, who's read Seven Habits? You guys read that? Okay. That's usually an age-related question. I mean, you wrote it, what, 30 plus years ago? Yeah. Except lifelong learners. <laughs> Just saying. Ideas to go from dependent to independent to interdependent. But one thing Covey didn't have access to him is he didn't have the neuroscience research, which we now have. To be dependent is positive if you understand how it works as an adult. To be independent is the next step, but notice it's additive. When I'm independent, I'm still dependent. However, if I'm adult and I didn't get to here, that means I'm one or the other, and that's not where I want to be. Again, river of integration, we don't want to be on the two sides. Those are polars. Ultimately, we want to get to here. Real quick, radical independence. Fear-based, complete mistrust of others, and um, there's a complete resistance. And we need to understand acceptance and resistance, which, which we'll be going into depth next time. But here's the idea. Here's a radical independent. It's the John Wayne. It's the rugged individualist. It's the one who says, I'm angry, so I'm going to isolate. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I don't need my spouse. I don't need my kids. I don't need my support group. Now, just for a minute, think. If I'm in an addictive position, if I'm getting chemicals inside of me that I'm creating on my own, opiates, that are causing me to, causing me to numb pain that I'm having, what do I need more than anything in that moment in order to heal? Interaction. Say it again. Interaction with, with people. I need community. And what's the first thing someone does when they've made a mistake and they feel badly about it? Hide. Hide. In other words, are you aware that the minute you do something that causes you to want to run from everybody? So, I don't know how you guys are. I was an expert at the man cave syndrome. I get mad at my wife. I go into my man cave. She's not allowed to come in my man cave. Ticks me off even more than she does. <laughs> so I'd go into my man cave and I'd isolate. I'd freeze her out, right? I wouldn't talk to her. I'll show her. She's gonna suffer so much because Richard's not talking to her anymore. And oh, she needs me. So this is how I came aware of this. I froze her out for three days solid, you guys. I was really on a good one. And I came out of my cave and I said, I'm willing to talk to you now. I'm no longer angry at you. She looked at me and she said, hmm. I didn't even know you were angry. <laughs> that really hurt. So where did I go? Back to my man cave. <laughs> but this time, when I went into my man cave, remember my man cave in mine. I have surround, so I have ESPN on every channel, and I'm just living in my man cave, high and mighty, right? This time, I put a picture of me on that man cave wall. And I said, man, you've got some problems. You just got seriously angry at your wife, and she didn't give you the time of day. You might want to consider it's not her. It's just you know, an aha. I'm sharing the aha with you all. So, may I borrow your... I stopped writing her a lease agreement for my happiness. Do you know how much pain you go through when you give your wife a lease agreement that says... The next 72 hours, babe, you own my happiness. I'm completely hinging my behavior on your behavior. My attitude, my feelings is all hinging on you. Please, make it good for me. She did. What do we call that? Where is it on the board? Codependent. In other words, it's an outside-in reward. I wasn't happy till she did something already. Okay. I had to get it, my, my capacity was severely diminished, my priorities are all messed up. And those lease agreements are brutal. I really highly recommend you throw your pad away. No, no, sign them anyway.